Okay, my outstanding friends, as promised, I talked about this toy, which is a Crooks radiometer. It has black veins, and on the other side of the vein, it's white. So it is black on this side, white on that side. When light hits it, it pushes the black and turns this way. The black pushes away. Now, you don't even have to have light. <clears throat> you can put your hand on this glass, and it will do the same thing. So it's heat. They know it's heat. <clears throat> now, the other thing is, if you poured cold water on there, it would go backwards. Now, nobody can explain this. There's not a single person on the face of the planet that's been able to explain this. The closest they can get to it is called transpiration, which means transfer, transferring energy, just like you respirate or you perspirate. It's vapor. And guess what? Where do you see this? Okay, I said it is vapor. Well, guess what? Fifty years ago, I said that the transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. And that's what transpiration is, is atomic vapor. And that is correct. It is atomic vapor. Now, I want you to pay close attention to two things here. First of all, you have the black faces here. The other side is the white face. But look at the thickness of the blade. That is very important to understand. All right, why is it very important to understand that that other black side that moves away had a thickness to it? Because this is the blackest material on Earth. This is going to be all wrinkled, and if you look at it, you couldn't tell it's wrinkled because it absorbs every bit of the, of the light that hits it. However, it's only because it's on aluminum foil, and they don't make that clear at all. I'm almost 100% certain of this. Now, they talk about all different colors, and then you get down to black. So here we are at black. All right, blacks continue to be created, all, all different chemistry. So here we go. ...be created, including this example, Vanta Black, which was discovered in 2014. It's the blackest material on Earth, now and it's see, made from vertically aligned... You see how it's all wrinkly looking now? Listen to what he says, made from carbon nanotubes carbon nanotubes so it's very uh, high-tech space this is above me <laughs> wow and what we're showing here is an example of a crumpled bit of aluminum that has been coated with this material you hear what he said aluminum and it's got the black on it included listen to what he said just to be careful i don't want to make any wrong statements this guy said oh wow <laughs> And what we're showing here is an example of a crumpled bit of aluminum that has been coated with this... All right, coated. So it's been coated with this material. ...material. So from the sides, you can see that that's a bendy, foldy bit of aluminum. But when you look at it head on, it looks like a black square. You can't see its no. shape because it's absorbing all the light. It... All right, where's that light going? It can only absorb light if eventually it radiates it back out, it transpires it back out. Well, guess what? If it's on a piece of aluminum and not one of those thick things, like I said on the, on the Crooks radiometer, it goes right out the back. <laughs> so it goes in the front and it's going right out the back of the aluminum. It's just taking it in and going out. That's why you can't see any of it coming back to you. Now, the only reason the Crooks spins forward or back is because black is the only one that absorbs and radiates. White doesn't absorb and, and it doesn't transpire. All right? Because if it, it, it can't transpire if it's not absorbing. It's like if you have no sweat and you can't sweat. <laughs> this one sucks up a bunch of electrons and then it pushes them back out. And that's what makes it go. When you have cold, it, it wants to fill, it, it wants these particles to pull out into the cold and get away, so it comes towards the cold. Normally it would go away because it's blowing its warm particles out. Now it, it, it's going the other direction because the particles are going the other direction. Alright, here's the key to this whole thing. We're working on surface temperatures. 
the glass dome surrounds it, and the surface temperature of the glass dome is the temperature of the room. Now, inside there, when you shine the light on there, that actually gets warmer than the glass dome. And just like if you put your hand on there and radiated heat down through the glass down into there, it would push away. And the reason it pushes away is because it's, it absorbs the heat and then it has to transpire the heat back out. It's not being actually pushed away, it's absorbing the heat and then the heat is pushing away and forcing it that way. So why does it come back when you put cold on here? Again, it's ambient temperature. This is going to get to a point where the cold here wants the electrons. And that had stored a bunch of electrons. The white doesn't store the electrons. It doesn't absorb it, and it, doesn't re it just reflects it. It doesn't absorb, and it doesn't emit. When I say emit, you see it bounce. The white bounces back the light, the light. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not emitting anything. It's just reflecting. This is absorbing, and then it's transpiring. It's emitting. Why it doesn't do that? It's just you, you think it's emitting. It's not. It's just reflecting. This is truly emitting. Now, so it absorbs, it emits, and then the emission forces it to go away from the emitted particles. That's why it goes that way. Now, now we put cold on the dome. The particles that are in here, the electrons, are like a, a water in a sponge. And he wants to suck that water out of the sponge to come back to warm up the glass. Because they're nothing more than, than, than electrons, basically. And the glass is cold now, and it says, I'd like some of those electrons. And it says, well, and it starts to pull them. And it starts to pull them, and, and it spins towards the glass in this direction. So it's, it's, it's a push and a pull. And, and, and this becoming colder is the reason because the electrons are leaving and going to the glass and the only way they can do that is is to pull this towards the glass and suck the particles right out of it like a sponge sucking the water out with a vacuum so this brings up the point what is heat and what is cold Heat is simply an excess of electrons. We flooded it with light, and they're nothing more than electrons, and they shake and everything, yes. But they actually penetrate and are absorbed by black. And only black, well, a lot of things will absorb, but white primarily does not absorb much at all. The, black, the blacker the black, the more it absorbs. Right? And, and it's, it's, it's due to colors. These are just every color is in the white. So it, it doesn't want to accept any light. There's no colors, basically, in black. It's, it's, it's colorless. So it wants all those colors to be absorbed. All right? When it does, it comes with electrons. Those electrons flood in there and make a glow. That's why they're, they're, they're just a bunch of electrons. That's what that's about. Alright, this is from the video that I did, and, and it says, Physicists cannot explain this toy, can you? He's pouring hot water on it, so there's no light, and it will start spinning. Watch, I'm going to talk as he does it. So this is hot water, and look at it go, zoom, and it starts taking off pretty good. Look at it go, now, it's going good. Now, he's going to take cold water, and he's going to put the cold water on it, and it's going to stop spinning. It's going to just actually turn around and go the other direction. Now, why would that happen? This guy did a very, very good job. It actually turns around and starts coming back this direction. There it goes. Zoom. See it? And it'll spin faster and faster and faster as it goes. All right, I don't know if I've made this point well yet or not. The only reason the black moves in a way is because it's stored up a bunch of power and glow and then it pushes it away and that's what moves it that's why your hand in there it radiates into that heat into that and then it doesn't push it at that point that radiates the heat back out 
that when it fills up with, with electrons. It takes a, a second or two, a few seconds, for it to warm up. The same thing with light. It doesn't just go, it's like, you know, like slapping something. It fills up and it energizes and then it starts to slowly go away. And the more electrons it absorbs, the faster it spins. Now, if you take the light off, it slows down. If you put cold water on it, it slows down and then it turns around and goes back the other way because it wants, it's, it wants to absorb. You know, well, the walls of the glass want to absorb the, the, the electrons that are in here, so they pull at it. That's why it pulls back this way. Originally, it's got so many in that it pushes away and forces it this way. Then, when you put the cold water on it, it doesn't have enough. It wants other particles, so it pulls back this way to get to the glass. Right, because it's become cold and it wants to get filled back up again. And the glass is as close as it can get to getting warm. Okay, here's the answer to the million dollar questions. Why does it spin the black away from the light? The reason is the black charges up and then it's discharging the particles that it sucked up. And as it discharges them, it pushes away. Why does heat spin it? Because the heat that it absorbed, as it pushes that away from itself, that's what spins it. It's not because the heat's hitting it. It's because it's absorbing heat, and then it has to release that heat, and when it does, it forces it to spin. Now, why does cold reverse the spin? This is the tricky one. Let's, I'm going to have to draw this out for you. Alright, this is really very, very simple. The light that hits this does not really push it. What happens is that it literally charges up, and we saw it with the, the infrared camera. We see it would get real glowy, and then it pushes itself beca away because it has to emit that light. The light it gets emitted back this way and pushes it. Now, why does the cold make it reverse? Because this is literally a sponge. The white side does not absorb. It doesn't absorb electrons like the black side. The black side, it heats up, it gets hot. A black thing in the sun, it gets real hot. And a white thing in the sun does not get hot, to speak of. You know, it warms up, but it's not, not certainly not like the black. So, the white side virtually doesn't get any heat. It doesn't absorb and it doesn't emit. You see it, you think it's glowing. It's not glowing, it's reflecting. That's the key. There is no absorption and there is no emission, to speak of. And there's some. This is a whole different story. There's a ton of absorption. We saw it. It started glowing like crazy. And then it has to admit. So there's a ton of emission. So what is it? It's a sponge. It's literally a sponge. And you have to have that separation between the hot side and the cold side. Otherwise, it just flow right out the other side, and you wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have that energy reacting. Now, so let's talk about the cold. You know that if you put something hot and you put something cold, the, the, the cold sucks the heat away. Basically, that's what's happening. Cold sucks heat out. And you can tell that. You see the, the, the cold just falling out of a refrigerator. It's heavier. It, 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 it falls into it. But anyway, let's just talk about why the cold would be pulled back towards the glass. And that's what's happening. The glass is very cold. And it wants to suck electrons out of this absorptive and, and emittive material. So it's really trying to pull electrons out of this. That's why the glass pulls it back and it starts spinning back towards the glass. Originally, when you put your heat on the glass, the heat f falls down and pushes them away. Well, you know what I'm saying. It charges them up, and then they go around. When you put cold on it, the cold gets inside the envelope of the glass, but it's still colder out here. It's always a difference between the temperatures. You have to have a temperature difference out here from what it is in there. Once it reaches an ambient temperature, the same temperature, it doesn't move doesn't move. So I hope you took away the bottom line is that black is a sponge material. It is literally a sponge. It absorbs electrons in the form of heat and it emits them 
in a form of heat. <laughs> you know, the particles come in as light, and, and, and then they come out as heat. Let's go with that. The white is just the opposite. They just bounce off. Whatever hits them bounces off. And it bounces off according to what the color of what it is that it's hitting. That's a whole other story. This, we'll just go black and white. Let's start with that. That's a sponge. That's why it absorbs and then it has to push the stuff out and it moves. And then when this is cold here compared to that, it tries to suck the particles back out of here. That's the key. You know, I got this is funny because I think about this. When you open your refrigerator freezer and a freezer door opens, if it's enough moisture in the air in your house, the relative humidity is fairly high, you'll see the the um, condensation like a cloud just fall right out of your refrigerator, right down to the floor. Why does it do that? <laughs> I mentioned there's a reason for it, and it relates to all this. Everything relates to the atomic nature, and when you have heat, and when you have cold. Well, what is the nature of heat, and what is the nature of cold? Think about that. Think about it carefully. And, and think about what happens when cold moves into heat, or does heat move into cold? Is there a difference? And then we're also going to talk about the black hole that they found in space the Russians created. And I, I, I'm going to show you that. That'll flip you off. It, a guy from Max Planck was watching as they were doing it. He locked himself in his office for three weeks because he freaked out so much. All right, this is the Russians in space. And they're expecting these particles to line up like this. And then they're sending all this information back because that's inside of a vacuum chamber. And they expected them to make a clean lattice in that empty void space. And instead, this happened. Now, I understand what's going on there. And, and, and I, I, I fully understand it because of electron flood theory. One of the scientists at Max Planck, when he saw this, he locked himself in his office for several weeks because he freaked out. <laughs> We're going to go into that. Think about why it would make that hole in the center of a vacuum chamber in space. Those are charged particles. Why would they do that? Okay, so I hope you've taken away the fact that what is the Big Bang Theory is a, a Big Bang of nonsense. It just is not, I don't know where it all started from, but it didn't start the way they're talking about. Nothing just expanded to everything. Although I can't completely rule that out. I can't say that didn't happen, but I can tell you what, if it did, somebody there loaded it with bacteria somewhere along the line. And they didn't just bump into each other and start creating these elegant little enzymes and proteins and catalysts all by themselves. There is a higher power that academia is, is just scared to death to deal with because it voids everything they've said. Literally everything they've said. Literally everything.